and the next presentation is basically by me uh, and it's called modern tool for business trace so let me uh share the screen okay all right uh, let me move to the sharing okay okay very good we are moving to this presentation okay so <clears throat> um as uh, many uh on this uh, uh conference already know that um in parallel with uh trees for technology and for engineering systems i've been busy with um, trees for business and management so basically uh these are applications for business innovation and today we use the words business trees so this term has been already coined uh, and it means that trees for business innovation so the business innovation can come in different aspects um well let me show you of uh, oh sorry <laughs> that's i'm jumping too fast um first of all it could be um innovation it could be um, yeah if, if we compare when we speak about when we, when we talk to um uh when we speak about um technology yeah that's on the left part so usually we are talking about innovation as a process which uh, is generated from an invention right so what do we do we invent either products or we can also invent manufacturing technologies so there are two areas where we can innovate and invent and correspondingly innovate um, however when we look at the business and management there are more areas actually first of all uh, there are business systems themselves uh, so you can innovate your company uh, second these are business processes uh, rather than the first case uh, for the first scenario when we're talking about uh, business system uh, innovation concerning management organization structure uh, we can also uh, uh, innovate the processes inside of this business organization and finally we can innovate something that we call business products and those business products are usually services which companies deliver to um, to the customers uh, definitely there could be two types of companies i mean there, there could be business businesses which produce uh, material products like cars uh, like washing machines and uh, but they are also businesses so we can apply this first two uh, ways to innovate business systems or business process within that organization but of course if we are going to innovate their products their products are here in material parts however there are business organizations like banks for example uh, which provide services right banks do not <laughs> produce material products and correspondingly there are three uh, large levels of innovations we can bring to the market uh, the vast majority of innovations are incremental where we do not really create anything new but update what we have there are disruptive innovations where we again do not change our value proposition but we radically change cut cost of it and finally radical innovations so when we are bringing actually moving to uh next s curves either for our organization or processes or business products um if you look at uh something that i prefer to call ecosystem uh business ecosystem um well any business is a separate unit right uh, and we are talking again here in this presentation we are talking about business very often business is messed up with social systems but there are strict uh, separation lines between business systems and social systems first of all business systems target at 
making money, making profits, and especially rising value of, uh, of the companies. So the major target, major MPV or integral MPV of any business is its market value. All the other MPVs are below and they contribute to the market value of the organization. Um, so when, 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 when you want to do some business, you run a company, you establish a business, it could be one man company, it could be thousands of people, doesn't matter, but there are still some sorts of business. Uh, it is a business systems with strict borders around it, which first of all, communicates with all the other business systems and also delivers, creates and delivers value proposition to their customers. And of course, any business system uh, is interacting with government, the state. Uh, those systems could not, not necessarily be business. It could be non-profit systems. It could be uh, institutions. It could be ministries, government, and so on. But what I put red uh, places, red, red spots here, it means that those where you see these red spots, we could actually innovate too. So we do not only innovate inside of our business, uh, certainly we can innovate our value proposition, our products, but we can also help to innovate our customers. Uh, we can help to innovate to the suppliers with whom we work or our partners with whom we work. And also we can help innovate with the state, right? So innovation can come anywhere. And uh, I'm talking again now about a business innovation. Uh, you know that the basis of TRIS is a technical system. Uh, TRIS has been different from many other uh, areas of technology and engineering that uh, the borders of the technical or an engineering systems were not clearly established. And one of the biggest advantages of TRIS that TRIS is based on the understanding the technical system and understanding how technical systems evolve. And we can clearly define a certain borders. I'm sure that all of you know this picture on the left. When we move to business, what happens? Uh, we are dealing now with business systems and products of business systems, uh, especially we're talking about services. So there are two large categories of what you innovate in, in business and management. These are business systems and these are services. Um, when we speak about business systems, uh, a while ago in 2013, I introduced this model, you can see it here, um, of business system, uh, which is consists of this blue box. Uh, and there are uh, six main components, right? Value adding engine, supply engine, delivery engine, management control, and key business processes. So these are, this is, you call, we call this what's in the blue box, a minimally viable model of a business system. You know that actually in business, there are no real definitions of systems. Uh, primarily today, we are talking about either sort of a, uh, structures or hierarchies or business models. Very nice word or term, <coughs> which has been used very recently and very popular right now. However, there is something behind business model. Behind business model actually identifies how the transactions or interactions are happening. And uh, business model, business system, model of a business system here identifies the critical set of components which are necessary to implement your business model. Um, I have been busy with uh, business trace since the uh, beginning of 2000s. And um, I set up a goal to develop a tool set and a set of processes governing solving the um, tasks of uh, business innovation. Um, uh, of course, uh, you probably know the story how it emerged uh, that um, people often ask me, hey, Marie, why do if you know trees, why do you need some sort of business trees? Take the contradictions, take the ways to eliminate contradictions, take function analysis, and go ahead. Well, unfortunately, this does not really work. Of course, if you have a significant experience with trees, you can populate your knowledge towards different domains. 
So, of course, if you've been working with trees for a while, you can apply certain principles to business, to social environment, to arts, for example, and so on. However, when you want to uh, transfer this knowledge, uh, you create a lot of cognitive gaps. I've seen many times as uh, technical people try to teach trees to non-technical people. And there are all these problems. Of course, there are bright people who capture everything, no matter in which way you bring it to them. But in most of cases, in most cases, there are cognitive gaps. For instance, if you come to uh, uh, the bankers, people who work for a bank, and try to explain them trees on the examples, very famous examples with a uh, bath painting or uh, kicking the uh, nails with a hammer and so on. Of course, those people understand it, but they will not transfer it to their domain because there is a cognitive dissonance. So to teach trees to business people, you must teach it on the business cases and business examples. So when I come to a bank, bank and uh, teach, uh, uh, do corporate training for bankers, my example are, are coming primarily from financial industry, financial conflicts, financial tasks, financial project, financial contradictions, and so on. Of course, uh, not only from financial, maybe from management as well, but um, uh, still I must give them, provide them, do the platform on which people understand and grasp the knowledge and can reuse it, what is most important. Because in trees, we develop not only a theory, we develop tools. And these tools are there for people to use them. So uh, even if I have a hammer for, 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 for technical people, I must develop a hammer for business people. Uh, here on this slide, you see the most common tasks which are demanded by the market. And I'm, when I'm talking about market, I'm talking about all sorts of business organizations. Of course, and um, definitely these are some sort of uh, uh, my experience, what I worked for in business, not only in technology, but also in business environment. Of course, the most important and most popular is solving non-standard open-ended problems. That's exactly what we try to do when we apply a contradiction-based approach. Also, um, uh, organizations, business organizations want to know how to evolve uh, on a short term. So how they can do all sorts of even incremental innovations. So we can explore and discover innovation potential. Uh, a lot of uh, projects are demanded regarding costs. So a customer comes to me and say, Valerie, you see, we are delivering a perfect service. It's nice, customers love it, but the costs are too high. Can we somehow cut the costs? And not just two, five, four, five percent. And when we want to cut costs by 30, 40 percent. And this is very similar to what you have at technology. Uh, the only difference is here you're talking about the uh, process, let's say, if I'm talking about the service, or if you're talking about a system. When you speak about a company, a company might, might include like 15,000 employees and you want to do the same as you do with 15,000 employees, but you want to do it with, let's say 10,000 employees. These are two different tasks. You see, first, you would like to cut cost of delivery and service. And second, you could uh, reduce number of your employees. Um, they also want to know what blocks them from really jumping ahead to move to new S-curves, let's say. Uh, companies also want to know uh, what could be future problems and challenges. So they have to be ready to meet the future demands. Uh, also, something which is very different from technology, uh, today, when we are in a global economy and we are very much interconnected, customers want to know, what will be future collaborations and synergies? Where to invest and invest for a long term? That's what I mean. They also want to roadmap future products and processes. This is very similar to what we call in a technical trees forecast. They want to understand market evolution in key driving factors of evolution. Uh, once they built a certain business and started to scale it, 
they are looking at how we can uh, diversify, how we can find new markets for our products or services. And finally, well, this is task which is a site. It uh, belongs to everything. Either we do long-term forecasting or we're solving a specific uh, open-ended problem. How to select, evaluate, and landscape solution ideas. So there are other tasks as well, not only what I've shown here, but these are most frequently uh, met tasks which I and my colleagues are facing. So, um, today, the entire trees, well, this picture again, it's uh, not only for business trees, but also for technology trees, uh, is split to three large categories of knowledge. Uh, according to, again, to the goals that our customers want. First of all, there is an area of solving specific problems and challenges. Here, you already know your problem and you want to solve. Second, a green circle is talking about, well, the current changes, the current incremental innovations, maybe not really much incremental, but still, it is when we want to have a sort of a short-term update, short-term innovation. Uh, here we are discovering innovation potential of our business systems and our business products. Also, the area which comes in here is a disruptive cost reduction. Uh, so here, we do not have a specific problem, right? We have a product or we have a system. We want to analyze it and identify what can be solved tomorrow. And the red circle is talking about long-term forecasting. It's future forecasting road mapping, generating disruptive and breakthrough business models and business process products. It's basically when we want to move to jump to a next S-curve, right? Um, so these are three large areas, and today we also, if you look, for instance, at Matri's certification curricula, you also will see that it is very similar to what is in Matri's. Also, there are some differences, slight differences. Um, these are tools which today belong to uh, certification, uh, certification on all these three levels and which we use. You see that many of these tools are, well, the same what you can find in technical trades. Um, so on specific problem, we use problem perception mapping, ideal solutions, it's a slightly changed version of ideal final result, root conflict analysis, principles separating conflict and requirements, 40 innovative principles for business and management, contradiction matrix, for eliminating business contradictions. And finally, building portfolio and ideas evaluation landscape. At level two, we have business model assessment where we work with uh, uh, business model of uh, business canvas, as you know, by Osterwalder, combining with this technical business system, which I showed you on the second slide. Uh, then we have function cost analysis, problem discovery, then we have training, you know it rather than substance field modeling we have object field modeling and we have standard inventive solution patterns or inventive solutions for business and management we have merging alternative uh, competing systems also known as feature transfer we have here function oriented search main parameters of value and s curve analysis and assessment and in the third level we have value conflict mapping multi-screen analysis Three slots and trends of evolution, especially for business systems and products for services again. We have systematic service evolution too. We have subversion analysis. We have anticipated failures analysis. We have business model navigator, diversification of business models, new market discovery. And finally, we have business innovation roadmap. So this is current toolbox for all three levels, for all three circles, which I showed you here. Moving further, just a very quick, um, briefly, uh, like I showed you, there are some tools which are known uh, and used in technical trees. However, uh, these are adaptations. You cannot use, or you can, of, you can use them, but it's, it's, you have to sometimes break your mind. And again, when you teach technical tree tools to business people, again, this doesn't work. 
So for the inventive principles, today we use an adapted version of 40 inventive principles for business and management. What is that? Well, this uh, slide, uh, it is a copy from the book, and it is talking about that what has been changed. Uh, completely changed the content of the principles, and you see the contents is changed. Completely changed the titles of the principles. In the following principles, the titles were changed. Let me show you. For example, this is a classical Altschuler inventive principle number one, segmentation, right? So there is three sub-principles. Divide an object into independent parts, make an object sectional, increase the degree of object segmentation. This is how the uh, principle number one looks for business and management. Divide a system uh, on an object into independent and interrelated parts. Divide a system and object parts, so that's similar. But then, of course, we can come with a process. Divide a process or any of its segments into smaller segments. Increase the degree of fragmentation of the process. Increase the difference between process segments. And the examples which are shown here, well, they are from business, not from technology. So business people can easily uh, create insights in their minds. So, and associations. Well, I will not read them, of course, <laughs> just uh, for you. And uh, I've also said that some principles changed uh, completely. So it's like the principle number 14, which is uh, spheroidality, right? In a classical Altschuler, uh, at least. And here it's, no, it's uh, non-linearity. And again, if you look at the contents of the principle, it's mostly talking about the activities and processes rather than some spherical shapes. Okay, and again, these are examples taken from the uh, uh, from business. Um, also, what is different than, like I said, in a classical Altschuler uh, list, there are uh, maybe two, three recommendations to each techniques, and there are one hundred ninety recommendations, um, and it's tricky because when we say we have forty principles. In reality, we have more than 40 principles. Now, each recommendation a principle you can also consider as a separate principle, which belongs to a category of these 40 principles. <laughs> and uh, this uh, version consists of, uh, can also include 40, 400, 0 to 402 examples uh, to make to help you uh, better associations. Again, the same story. Even a worse story with inventive standards, you know, there is a system of 76 inventive standards uh, organized by the way the technical systems evolve. There is a similar system for uh, business management problems. However, it is based not a substance field model, but on an object field model. Uh, we have a definition of what an object is and so forth. And uh, rather than 76 standards, we have 43 standards at this, at this system. And the classification is different. The classification is by a type of a problem. There are five type problems, like you have to improve insufficient effect. Well, sometimes if you think in functional terms, you say you want to improve insufficient function, or you want to improve excessive function, or you have to improve poorly controllable function, or you want to eliminate a negative effect or negative function. And finally, uh, very similar to uh, technical technology, but it's a different class of problems. Uh, what we, what we want to organize and improve measurement and detection. Okay, uh, this is uh, a brief present an overview presentation, so I don't go to details, but you can see that uh, the models uh, are similar. Yeah, we are talking about uh, the object field models. And of course, the definition of a field is different here. You already know that in, te in a technical version of the two uh, field also is technical. And here we are talking about a business field. What can be a field? It can be anything. It can be emotional field. It can be informational field. <coughs> it can be engaged me field. Anything that provides interaction. Once there is an interaction between two objects, there are uh, there is a certain medium which established this interaction. And, well, uh, we also try to identify the least of such fields, but 
it works. It works even without knowing exactly what a field is. But a field is very important because, you know, uh, there are some um, updates of a classical 76 inventive standards where fields are thrown away. And this is a big mistake because the role of field of twofold. First of all, field is a resource. And second, uh, field uh, pushes you to looking for solutions with the highest degree of ideality because um, you must solve your problems, preferably without replacing a field. If you replace a field, uh, you need to do too many changes. So you can find a more ideal solution without replacing the kind of field. Okay, there are also some new tools which were developed basically for technical trees, some for business trees. I just give a, a brief overview of them here. It's like volume well, conflict mapping. There are some tools developed by me, you know, multi screen analysis, conflict analysis. And tools also business model navigator developed by Michael Rubin and Andre Kurian, which identifies specific business models capable of eliminating typical business contradictions. So they took um, 55 business models and identified which business contradictions can be defined by which uh, model. There is also ADS landscaping. There is always uh, a big gap in our trees approach that uh, we can help find ideas, but then a customer is left with big uh, trouble, <laughs> which ideas are the best. So this is sort of combination of multi-criteria decision matrix and a set of layers to evaluate and build a sort of landscape for selecting ideas. And finally, business road innovation road mapping. It is approach to strategically plan to tam a timeline of future innovations consists of number of layers based of Dr. Robert Powell approach, probably you know, it's a Cambridge professor uh, who was one of the founders of uh, technology and business road mapping approach. So in fact, this business innovation road mapping is not really a trace tool like ideas landscaping. It's not a trace tool, but these are used in the uh, projects and of course in training curriculum. So uh, everything is organized in processes. And today, uh, to avoid a problem as with the classical trees, where you have lots of versions of trees and lots of versions of uh, um, uh, schools, et cetera, which is not bad, not bad. But we can, when we come to training, we need to have a certain standard. So uh, we established just a year ago, International Business Trees Association, and try to build a curricula under the roof of this association. And today, we already have uh, training courses, uh, training standards of the courses for all three levels. So we certify with level one, level two, and level three. Uh, level three was just introduced recently, and it says uh, this is it's the moment uh, is only in Russian, but it will be in English next year. We also plan to do the level four and five. Why so? Because, well, originally I saw that we eventually will bring together uh, matrix certification for technology and for business. Well, it will, won't be the same certification because definitely the competences are different. Again, the principles uh, are the same, but the specific details are different. Uh, well, and the last slide I wanted to show is that this approach has been really evolving and it's just in 2020, the maps on the uh, world map, uh, they actually, these are cities, uh, from where I had business customers for business trees. Okay, I think I'm quite in time. So I want to thank you very much. And if there are any questions, please let me check. Okay, from Hans Gerd. Are there are differences in trace tools applications at operational compared to strategic management level? Should there be even a difference in theoretical approach? Of course, there is a difference because when you speak about a strategic level, you are talking about uh, really high level innovations and uh, s curve jumps. Yes, when you speak about the operational changes, these are really incremental innovations, which you can uh, often sometimes you do not need even trace to solve these problems. 
you need apply to trees only when you need to innovate. Or again, I mean that trees is based on invention. Very often on operational level in business, you can solve problems with really known solutions which do not require any innovation. Um, do you consider creating evolution trees available tool at level three? Mm, maybe, I don't know. Maybe it, it just requires... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Very good question. I think Iris can be used to solve the business problem and a logic is more useful for generating as quickly than the steps itself. What do you think about it? Now I'm going to disrupt you completely. I didn't uh, put it on uh, the explanation, but if you look at this slide, actually, ha did you see any trees arrays here? Yeah? Look carefully. Do you see any arrays? No. Why? There is an explanation. Uh, problem solving process supported by different tools, which I showed there, completely replaces arrays. ARIES was developed for um, solving technical problems. And ARIES is heavily based on physics. Look at resources, look at operational zone, look at operational time. Jump to part four, where you're talking about electrical fields, magnetic fields, uh, small little man, I, I call them nanodwarfs. All this is useful, useless for business. We don't need it. And if I have this process, like here, uh, like I showed you, this is Aries for, uh, for, 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 for business. You see, we have first step, establishing goals, defining really what we want, decomposing our uh, problem into this set of sub-problems, which are identified with RCA class as contradictions. Then we do a strategic definition of how we solve problem problem further. So how we solve our problem, which contradictions we solve. Then we use either the 40 inventive principles or uh, we can also use inventive standards. Also, we mostly use them with function, function model um, or we use separation principles. Then we jump to evaluation. Forget Aris, why do you need Aris? Of course, there are some uh, places where you can use, identify like operational time, operational zone. But so far, my experience shows that risk is not needed. We just <coughs> don't face problems with such contradictions. <coughs> I'm sorry, that could not, would not be solved without these tools. So I see no use of Aris in business trace. Okay. Could you give an example of a problem that was solved uh, used by business trees and that could not be solved without using trees? Um, uh, I can never do that because any problem, any, absolutely any problem can be solved with trees, without trees. You see, trees is uh, not something that, trees helps you to solve problems, but trees uh, does not replace human brain at all. Um, I, I have many problems, for example, uh, uh, where people try to big companies were trying to solve uh, uh, those problems for years, and then with trees we solved them for let's say a couple of hours. Yeah, it is, but it doesn't mean it doesn't it doesn't mean that these uh, problems uh, could not be solved uh, without trees. They could, they definitely could. Um, if you speak about um, uh, uh, about something that just at this moment, probably uh, we will be losing time. I will be thinking about some problem during next, uh, uh, during next presentation and will uh, tell you. Okay. Uh, then I will, in my next, I will use my right as a moderator to do it. Okay. Um, the final question, because we are running out of time. Could you also shed light on advantages of business trees compared to design thinking? Uh, I propose you never compare design thinking and business and trees or business trees because these are separate tools. These are separate frameworks. Design thinking does not include tools to solve problems or create inventions or innovation. Design thinking has, let's say, six steps. First step is uh, finding a problem, really, with uh, 
other means like uh, empathy tree and so on. And then you go to prototyping and so on. The only tool is uh, ideation, which says nothing. And this is where trees can be used. So design thinking tree and trees are complementary uh, tools. They are not com competitive at all. Okay, Sylvia. <laughs> all right, Sylvia, welcome. Okay, uh, thank you very much. I should have done myself because I also have to uh, make sure we are on time. Thank you.